Hey there again, it's Jimmy, and I've got a new one for you today. Uh, but first business, if you like what you see, please do hit subscribe and like, and uh, turn on your notifications to let you know whenever a new video gets posted. Check this out. Today we have a 1985 Audi 4000S Quattro. Yes, Audi's little all-wheel drive uh, monster. Well, yeah, monster? Well, maybe. Lovable monster. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's check this thing out. This thing's pretty cool, although this one's kind of beat. But that's kind of how they tend to be. They do tend to they la they last forever once they're uh, maintained. Um, but uh, obviously, eventually, weather does take its toll. So, like I said, it's an '85. The eighty four was the first year of the eight of the 4000 quattro and uh you know obviously it's the little brother of the big turbo or quattro which was released what back in 19 at the 1980 geneva auto show that one was a turbocharged five cylinder the 4000 was the obviously the four uh four door sedan version of it without the turbo that was kind of the biggest difference the best part about it though is the price was about half the price of that so these were somewhere in the upper teens so 17 18 thousand i believe and the uh, full turbo quattro was in the high 30s to low forty thousand dollar range but um you know obviously this is based on the audi 4000 um and uh with a few uh obviously uh important exceptions so let's see this one is finished in zermatt silver one of the color options, obviously. Um, and like I said, it's an 85. So for 85, it got the more slightly reworked bumpers and body work. Um, the 84s had the old kind of separate bumpers. 85 had the integrated ones that you can see here, which is cool. Uh, headlights were different. Uh, you got the flush mounted ones here. Still had the grill with a, got to imagine the four rings here. And um, yeah, a bunch of other stuff. This one's obviously been well used. We're in Colorado here, so. Rocky Mountain region, seeing this kind of rust from uh, road, uh, you know, it's from the road rock trips is very normal for this age car and leads you to think that it's led a very full life with lots of miles. So, but we'll take a look at that too. Wheels on these were standard um, 14 inch uh, Ronal uh, wheels, which were nice, made in Germany, alloys, um, kind of an iconic Audi wheel back in the 80s. The uh, Ur Quattro obviously had them as well. I believe they had a 15 inch though. And uh, what was, let's see, what else the 4000 Quattro got? The Quattro got the little soft um, spoiler on the back, which was neat. Other than that, you really couldn't tell from the outside that this wasn't a regular just 4000 S. And uh, obviously it had the big chunky badging back then, Audi 4000 S Quattro, the RO is missing here. But um, the Quattro basically, I mean, you know what it is, but basically Quattro is a, permanent all-wheel drive system the power split 50 50 front to rear you could lock the differentials and this thing really really is pretty much unstoppable in snow um and it's a full-time on-road dry or wet system unlike subaru at the time where you had to make sure the conditions were slippery so this is very much a pioneer of the uh, all-wheel drive uh, family sedan movement so let's see what else do we have so let's walk around the whole thing obviously got the trunk lid got the um uh, uh the soft spoiler on the back, which is neat. One of the things Audi did back then was very cool. In the rear window, um, the heating element, they actually put the word Quattro in there as part of the element. So when you had a frosty morning and you put that on, all of a sudden Quattro would appear in the back there. Also had it in the side windows, which is nice. Um, you know, decent upright greenhouse, very nice. Fairly roomy headrooms there. Um, good looking sedan it's you know pretty conservative as audi was back then um but uh just you know it's really it's held up well and these are very very popular especially for engine swaps now this one stock these had a and this one still does 2.2 liter inline five uh producing 115 horsepower so this looks pretty complete uh and audi hallmarks always kind of been to have the engine way out ahead of the front axle which doesn't always do much for the handling however this car, a 4000 S Quattro is extremely well balanced. And I mean, on the snow or ice, it'll just dance if you let it, it's fantastic. It's kind of interesting how the five cylinders canted sort of uh, slant five. And then there's no room up front, right? That's why the radiator and condenser had to be put to the side here, kind of a smaller one. Um, but it works well enough as long as you stay on top of it. Um, here's the van WAU. 
ZZZ 857FA07356. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Got some informational stickers there from Audi. Battery was back here, uh, kind of near the firewall. I guess kind of doing anything to get the weight off of the front axle. Um, and uh, let's see what else we have here on the side. Um, let's look inside the trunk. In the Audi 4000, Quattro and regular, the fuel tank is actually behind the back seat, which I believe is for safety, uh, which makes sense. The big negative is you can't fold the back seats down, so you have a little less room. However, trunk space is quite large. There's a lot of room in here. Uh, the spare tire would fit over here on the left, and you have a lot of space in here, and then you have another molded bin over there and so forth. So not not bad at all. These had the big wraparound taillights that went here and here. And obviously picked up again here. Have room for the license plate in the middle. Dual exhaust outlet, but single exhaust pipe with a muffler right behind the uh, behind the bumper. So let's take a look inside. And what we have in here is a nicely finished door panel with really nice nice cloth, soft vinyl up here. This is softish. This is all soft. So the door panel is pretty much all soft with chrome. You have power locks, which were vacuum actu actuated, which sometimes would cause issues. And if you're a fan of old VWs, you definitely recognize this uh, door pull as used in millions of Beatles, buses, Carmen Gias, Squarebacks, etc. since what, the 60s? I think this was the last car that Audi used these on. Well, this and the coupe right through 87. Uh, I think the 5000 had them in the beginning, but uh, eventually switched over to something else. But nice, very comfortable. Um, really nice plush velour seats. These headrests were nice with the kind of the ring style so you could see through them if you turned your head. You had a very nice uh, steering wheel, not leather covered, but a big old uh, front pad there. Kind of like in a Volkswagen. Actually, Volkswagen's the era had something very similar, right? The GTI. Um, you had these headlights turned here. Switches, which these don't do anything. This one, I'm not sure what that one does. Cruise controls here. Vents and everything. A nice big bin over here. Hazard lights. Rear defroster. Standard, obviously. And then a speedometer, or the instrument cluster. So this one only shows 116,490 something miles. I don't believe that's accurate. These VDO ones are notorious for going bad. Um, I had an old 4000 once and it went bad too. Uh, it has an upshift light, which is interesting right there. So it tells you when to shift for maximum economy uh, and a clock, which is also good. And then obviously what a 64, 6500 RPM red line. The Quattro's in the early years all came with a five-speed manual. So you could not get an automatic originally. Um, this falls readily to hand. It's a decent shifting unit. Not bad at all. You have the AC here. So you get four uh, fan positions. Turn the AC on. Little switch right there. And then these are just normal sliders. It's an aftermarket radio with a removable faceplate. And then here is where you could lock the differentials. So you could just switch the switch and the diff, if you had it locked, it would light up right there. Then it had a volt, uh, voltmeter and oil temperature meter also. Uh, kind of like a little bar graph type thing. Power windows, you'd lock the power windows, power windows, and then obviously Siggy lighter. Uh, the dashboard was, well, for 85 was certainly much nicer than the 84 ones. A lot of people with 84s and older Quattro's and 4000 Quattro's would actually retrofit the later one uh, to it. It just bolts right in pretty much. And the Quattro has a little emblem right there in the middle of the uh, dash so the passenger knows what they're looking at. Glove box, decent size, it's not bad at all. And then let's see what else. Could adjust the height uh, on the uh, on the seat, and obviously front and back, everything was just manual on these. Back seat was uh, pretty spacious. Doors were maybe a little tight to get in, but once you're in, you're pretty comfortable. Uh, certainly good for four people in here, not five. There's just not. Well, you could get five in here, but the backrest isn't the most comfortable for five. But also, you have the sunroof and everything. And yeah, I mean these were. God, these are phenomenal uh, cars, quite popular. The price was good, you got a luxury car, or semi-luxury car anyway. 
that was pretty much unstoppable in the snow. And I mean, just an absolute hoot to drive. They're not the most powerful thing, but you keep them on the boil, they're kind of a momentum machine. You just keep going and man, it will absolutely reward you as a driver. It's just one of the more fun little cars to drive. And with that all wheel drive system, it's just unstoppable. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the 85 Audi 4000 S Quattro. So thank you very much for hanging with me for this. And uh, again, if you liked what you saw, please do hit subscribe and like, turn on your notifications, and we'll keep doing more of these. Thank you. Bye-bye.